Quick announcement besties I have made a second channel. I'll basically be posting whatever I feel like there that doesn't fit here whenever I feel like and it'll serve as my backup channel. Link down below in the description. Hey there besties, how are we doing today? So, uh, a little bit more of a serious video coming at you today, not gonna lie. So, Miss Amberlynn uploaded a video titled, I Didn't Lie. From what I know, this is, um, I guess, proof uh, that she had cancer. So I'm assuming this isn't gonna be like a, you know, giggly, funny kind of video. She also provided, so I will also provide, a trigger warning for incision and cancer. I'm not sure specifically in what regards that is, but I will also provide that trigger warning <gasps> no honey it's not for cushion that's not for a colocony to do it's not maybe my cat will stay oh never mind disregard so with that being said uh let's do this <laughs> The last few days have been very triggering for me. The emotional toll has been very heavy. I don't care if people know I have had cancer. I originally shared my story because I felt connected to a lot of you. I have been in a lot of your lives for years now and vice versa. After telling my family, you guys are the next people I told. Telling you was embarrassing and shameful. I trusted the internet with something I shouldn't have. Since then, I've been called the girl who lied about cancer. I didn't lie. Whoa. <laughs> I, just, I got in my face there. Okay. Okay. I've been having panic attacks. Oh, God. So I got my result. my results back. And I do have cancer. I have womb cancer. Cancer. And it's really hard to watch. You know it's my fault. I know there's been a problem for so long. Please, if you're a female, please, please, just go, go to the gyno, please. I just have to. I wish I had my mom. Amberlynn, stop. <laughs> My mom is coming today. We are about to go pick her up. Oh, this made me it's really happy. It's going to be a bit of a drive. Um, I have not seen her in almost 12 years. I am so excited. So when she found out I had cancer, obviously it, she's devastated. Um, my mom is here. She's been here for a few days. Jeez, I mean, it's it's, just, it's it's rough to watch. Um, seeing that like hurts my heart a lot. I know it's not like any sort of of comfort per se, but at least she was able to reconnect with her mother. I'm sure that has changed her life a lot. To get on a personal level with you, um, one of my parents I was not in contact with for a while, um, and they were diagnosed with cancer. And I still had and have a lot of, I guess, unhealed trauma, I suppose you'd say, around that parent. Um, so it was hard for me, but I decided that cancer was a lot bigger than that and I didn't want them just 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 to clarify they are fully recovered now so like they're all good but I didn't want them to as this is like difficult to even like say and I just didn't, I didn't want things to go badly and not have I guess that reconnecting in my life um so I can relate to, I guess, the reason why I bring that up is like I can relate to something as awful and just unbelievable as cancer. I don't want to say in a good, you know, doing something good because it's not, but something bad also brings something good. My cat's making suspicious noises upstairs. Hey, T, what are you doing? I heard you running. Come here quickly. What? Oh! I mean, I was really glad to see Amberlynn and her mother reconnect because it seems like her mother is doing fantastic. Like she's been sober. She's, you know, making an effort to be in Amberlynn's life now. And I think that's great. I feel like a lot of, I mean, from what I've interpreted, a lot of Amberlynn's childhood trauma is obviously based around, you know, her mother and her father and whatnot. So I guess to, to begin to heal that relationship is probably very powerful for her. 
So I guess despite this awful thing happening, it is good that something good came out of it, you know? The most incredible people I've ever known, like the way that she is, like, it's gonna hurt so much when she goes back home. Like, I cry about it a lot, even though it hasn't even happened yet. And just knowing she has to go home in a few days is heartbreaking. Like, I can literally hands down say she is probably one of the best people I've ever known. And I'm just so proud of her. And God, sorry, it's just so emotional. It's been absolutely amazing having her here during this time. I had two options for treatments. And that was this hormone pill, which could actually potentially stop uterine cancer. But sometimes it don't work or I could have a hysterectomy. So those were the two options. And I had the choice of choosing. Been saying for a long time, I do want a kid. And I, Getting a hysterectomy means you can't have a kid that's biologically yours that came out of you And that was kind of hard to wrap my head around and if I had a chance not to have surgery Especially because of my weight. I did not want to have it. Obviously. So I had the appointment She said I no longer have an option. The hormone pill is not an option. I will be getting a hysterectomy For sure. It is already scheduled. Just a point of criticism. Listen, I know I struggle with this too. The whole volume thing. That music girly is just just a little too loud and it's a little bit distracting from your message. I'm sorry. I just, I just, I gotta be a little bit judgy and, and savage. Invalidating my experience left me hurt and lost. So many sweet comments. So thank you guys so much. What spoke to me though was people were actually having a full-fledged discussion about She's lying about having cancer. She does not have cancer. I swear, she probably just got told that she has precancerous cells. That's all it is, blah, blah, blah. I have been to so many appointments lately. Consistently and constantly I'm at appointments talking about the fact that I have cancer. If I heard the word precancerous even one time, I would have the weight of the world off of my shoulders. I'm not an idiot. I'm not a fucking idiot. If I was to be told that I only had precancerous cells, I have years. With all the appointments that I've gone to, don't you think I would have heard those words? No, instead I'm sitting in these appointments with my mom as she's holding my hand and I am gasping for air. I have had anxiety attacks inside of the fucking cancer center because I cannot believe this is happening to me and for people to even question for a second that I would be lying about this, it's disgusting. I have pamphlets upon pamphlets that I have received recently from the cancer center and I just sat here for 10 minutes going through them trying to find proof that I truly have cancer so you guys can see for yourself I should not should not have to do that I'm tired of crying I really like I mean I know this is an old video but I hate that she I hate that she felt that way that hurts my heart I think that Amberlynn has lied about a lot of things I think that no one can deny that but I truly don't believe that she lied about having cancer I don't know if it's just me being naive but I I don't know. I don't think that even Amberlynn, I don't think a lot of people would ever be like, I'm gonna lie about having cancer. So I can under I can understand, you know, being so frustrated. I mean, I'm sure she must have known that was a possibility just because it, she's lied a lot. And, and she even would admit, I'm sure she's lied a lot. She's been misleading a lot, but I don't think that she's capable of lying about something like that. I mean, I don't know. I don't know her as a person, but I, I mean, I'm, sh I'm sure I've said that before, but I just, I do wanna say that I believe that she had cancer. I do understand the speculation, like I said, because she's been like misleading and dishonest with their audience in the past, but personally, I do believe that she had cancer. And hurting and being so fucking scared. And it's like, I regret so badly ever, ever sharing this on YouTube. And I should never have to feel that way, ever. I found what I could. I tried to not show any per personal information. These are the only two photos that I have um, that show you that I have uterine cancer, which also is called endometrial cancer, which is cancer in the womb. And I would do anything, fucking anything else to have this. Hey guys, my eyes are really swollen, um, but I did it. Um, the surgeon told Becky that the surgery went perfect. Um, that honestly shocks me, but I'm glad I'm in a lot of pain, obviously. I hope I continue being okay. Hey guys, so it is the next day. About two hours ago, they had me stand for the first time and 
uh, really dizzy and really nauseous. Like I almost puked and so I had to sit down, lay down. It's frustrating. They told Becky that my cancer was very deep in my uterus and they're glad that they got it out when they did. Um, that's scary. I haven't seen a lot of these clips. Um, I kind of, I guess, got back into, I should say, these videos um, a little bit after the diagnosis and that situation. I just, I just, I don't know. I felt a little bit uncomfortable, you know, reacting to that because it, it, it's such a personal experience and it's hard, it's hard to watch. I'm not going to lie. It's hard to watch for me also. The only reason why I'm really reacting to this one is because I know it's like a big topic right now. So I think it's kind of important <laughs> to add to my um, art, itinerary, art library, <laughs> library of uh, videos I've covered and you know to be able to you know obviously react to it and kind of put my own two cents into it but I'm glad that the surgery went so well I mean especially like she said a person you know her weight like so many things could go wrong I'm glad that nothing went wrong and it went smoothly and things are going good that's what matters um I'm very grateful that the surgeon is so amazing and she was able to do this hey guys so it's day three in the hospital um <sighs> update last night I was bleeding and um, a big blood clot came out, so that's not good. Since then, I haven't had that happen again. I've been doing nothing but sleeping all day and all night. Um, I had to do this oxygen thing, and the guy was actually, this is a good thing, was actually shocked at how well my how good my lungs are. Good. So that made me feel really good. And um, I bypassed, because what they do is they put it on a little level thing to where they want you to oh, go, you and I bypassed it. it like oh, okay. super far. It's supposed to measure like how well your lungs are working. Okay. So we're at day four of being in the hospital. My skin is really dry, as you can tell on my face. Um, my incision is perfect looking. Great. Everything's perfect I with that. that. I still have a headache. I'm still not eating, and I'm always nauseous. I just don't know what else to say. Um, I'm just miserable, and um, I just want it all to go away. I want it all to go away. I don't even know what I'm saying. I want it all to go away. Ugh, that hurts like, I just want to go back to my old self. And I keep asking myself, why me? Why did this have to happen to me? Ugh, man, just, that hurt my heart. Ugh, man, that hurt. I, I hate seeing people suffer. I hate it. Like, I don't care, like, who you are, what you've done. Seeing people suffer just hurts. And, like... I don't know how to explain this. It's like when people are in this state, they almost kind of go back to like just like being a child because like you're so helpless, right? So it's it's like seeing a child in pain. It's it's sad and it's hard to see her feeling that way. I mean, it's, it's awful. And I'm sure this was a really traumatic experience for her. Jeez, I mean, I'm, I, again, I'm just glad that she's much better now. That's that's what matters. But this is this isn't easy for me to watch either. I mean, I can't even imagine experiencing it. I can't. I don't. I don't know if I'd have the strength. Um, I don't. I don't. Just, I feel horrible, and I'm barely drinking any liquids. I'm trying my hardest. It's just All right. another day of not doing very good. My pathology results. It's gonna be a little confusing for people who don't understand it because I was super confused, and I'm the one going through it. And I had to ask my oncologist a lot of questions to figure out what does this mean. I got a hysterectomy, as you guys know, because of uterine cancer. And what they do is they took. In my case, they took everything, ovaries, tubes, everything, uterus. And they took all of that and they went and tested it. And I finally have a staging and a grade with uterine cancer. It's a staging and a grade. So my stage is 1B, grade 2. The reason why it is stage 1B is because the cancer spread more than 50% into my uterine muscle, which means it was almost at stage 2 which the stages mean how much the cancer has spread. So the grade means how aggressive the cancer was, like how badly it wanted to spread. So since I got grade two, grade one means the cancer is lazy. Grade three means the cancer is so aggressive, it wants to spread as fastly and as quickly as possible. And I was right in the middle. So that is why I am stage 1B, grade two. I just feel kind of like run down and my abdomen is like really tight because I, okay, so I never like talked about this really, but my incision is vertical, so it's really, really big. The reason why they did it like that is because that was the safest way for them to do it on me because of my size and how I'm proportioned and stuff like that. And I think I've just been doing too much. Um, my muscles are kind of just like 
what are you doing so they feel really tight and i sort of feel a little nauseous from it but i am okay so no one has to worry trigger warning and session i was about to pause and say uh, i'm gonna blur this out i just don't really feel like it's my place to show this on my channel but i'm i mean i'm looking at it uh it's a photo of amberlynn's scar um it's a scar um i don't i don't want to sound rude but it looks like amberlynn's body yeah i mean that's a big scar but it's kind of badass though like not to like make light of it but scars are badass especially like scars like this like i had cancer and i beat it yo like that's a that's a badge of honor right there i'm just gonna blur this out and skip through that my first follow-up appointment and ct scan actually getting ready um today is the day i'm getting a ct scan and it is my follow-up so Okay, it's gonna be face. first time in a car in five weeks. Wow. I am in the car. I did it. I feel a little bit of pain. I don't know. I just had my CT scan. Woo woo! Went good. Got the hot fuzzy feeling and felt like I was peeing my pants. If you guys have ever had a CT scan, then you know what I'm talking about. And my other follow-up appointment, or my other appointment, the follow-up is uh, it's an hour and 15 minutes. So I'm currently at my um, follow-up appointment. I've been here for over an hour. My oncologist is super popular. Three months ago, diagnosed with uterine cancer. Five weeks ago, got a total hysterectomy vertical. Very, very long incision, okay? But a couple months ago, I got a CT scan and my lymph nodes were enlarged. And my oncologist was worried, but she said with my size, she cannot do a biopsy. Because she said that when you do a biopsy on someone, it's like on the blood vessel and someone my size, I would have lost a lot of blood. It just would have been very risky. So what she suggested is I get another CT scan. So I got another CT scan, which was today, and my lymph nodes are the same size as they were before. They were the same same size as they were a couple months ago, which she said is a very good sign because that means I could just have bigger lymph nodes because there are people out there who have bigger lymph nodes. She said if it was cancer and if it was cancer that was spreading or if it was spread from my uterine cancer, then in the last two months, the lymph nodes would have gotten bigger. But she said she is not worried. So I have another appointment scheduled in three months to do another CT scan to measure the lymph nodes again. I am cancer free. I started actually bawling my eyes out and I was like thanking her. And I could tell she probably gets that kind of praise every single day. I was literally bawling. I'm just yeah, like, I'm oh my gosh, so thank you so much. She saved my life and I'm so grateful for her because there are a lot of surgeons who are scared to operate on people my size. And she was confident enough. I'm not saying other surgeons aren't confident, but I'm just saying like, I'm just grateful for her. I don't I don't know how else to say it. The rumors of me lying were really getting to me. I just, I'm hurt, you know? I get a lot of hate online, obviously. And it's like, I'm able to accept a wide range of hate. I'm really, truly able to. But when people come at me with things like this and sit there and tell me that my cancer was fake and is fake and the journey I went on was fake. It is unbelievable. It is literally unbelievable. You want your proof, here's your proof. This is from my health portal where I'm able to sign in and see all of my yeah, results, summaries that. of my appointments. Um, I don't know how to pronounce big doctor words, um, so Same. excuse me. This 29 year old, I'm sorry, this is pathetic. This 29 year old, presents today for follow-up after total abdominal hysterectomy, bilateral salpingo oophorectomy on July 15th, 2020, with final pathology showing stage 1B, grade two, endometrial cancer. I don't know how much more proof <laughs> people want for me. This is real and it happened and I've had to struggle with it and it's been fucking terrifying. And it's like, I can handle, I can fucking handle the hate, but when it comes to this, it does hurt me. And you haters, I fucking hate that word, have won. You guys have hurt me and I hope that you're happy. I'm sure you get a kick out of seeing me like this. I hate that I have to sit here and show such personal freaking stuff that not even people in my life have gotten to read. Obviously it's information I share, but it's just like, these are medical records. I don't want to be known as someone who is lying about having cancer. It's disgusting. There's already so many other rumors about me that is just like unbelievable. And it's just like, I have no proof for those other things. And it's just it's so much that I am pinned out to be someone 
that isn't even real. Like, you guys see me as someone that isn't even real. And it's like, there's a whole other version of me that you guys don't know or won't accept or truly see for themselves. But there you go. You got your medical proof. Dang. I mean, I feel like I've never seen her cry like that. I don't, I don't know. Something about it. So that was a lot. <laughs> I mean, this is this is like a lot for me just to watch and to like process. Like, I don't I don't know. It's it's heavy. I need like a stiff chocolate milk after this. <laughs> no matter what I do, people will believe what they want. I've made a lot of mistakes in the past, but I'd never lie about something like this. The human spirit is stronger than anything that can happen to it, <laughs> girl. Um, okay. I, listen, I don't want to be a, a jerk. But that's a little, <laughs> that's a little cheesy to put like a quote and then like the little happy clips. I love that you're happy, but like, I don't know. Go off. <laughs> Twenty star. Yeah, stairs. Cucumber. I like that sweater. Wifey Lynn. A lot of wifey in this. I've been given a second chance, true. That was a really uh, heavy one. I'm feeling a little down after that. Um, thank you guys so much for watching today. Uh, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on your way out. My goal for 2022 is 15,000 subscribers. I would love if you joined the grandchildren army today. Oh, and now speaking of subscribe, I gotta give an extra special shout out to my beloved channel members. By the way, we've got a Discord server and we're all besties. Seabell, Senya, Sophie Watson, Lukey, Betty, Katie Butler, Elizabeth W, Chloe, Panda, Fonda Silva, Mystic Magic Luna Meowers, Joey, Pokey2, Tori Kelleher, Elizabeth Richardson, Roly Poly Toad, No Spoons Only Knives, Saber Sword Song, Mrs. Lugo, Despite Myself, Olivia Cat, Corey V, Lewis Christian, Jasmine Levon, April, Angelina Rafoot, Annie Autopsy, Clopalo, Kristen RB, Your Local Tiny Bastard, Point Blank Period, Alicia, Lula Duda, and last but not least, Phineas the Hedgehog. Thank you guys so much for giving me just a little bit extra support. I love you. I appreciate you. You guys just make my life a little bit brighter, especially now that we have our Discord server. That's fun. I love that for us. And yeah, just thank you. I, I love you a lot. I really do. Question of the day. Ah, uh, geez. I mean, how do I think of a question after all that? Yeah. Oh, I thought of one. What TV show are you watching right now? I've been re-watching Game of Thrones with my boyfriend and that's been great. What TV show have you been watching? Maybe it's something I can add to my uh, my list of things to watch because I, I do like to watch things as most American humans do. All right, besties. Thank you so much for spending precious minutes of a beautiful life with me today. I love you. I appreciate you. Stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, you look iconic today and I'll see you soon. Okay, okay.